run so far. Then let's continue with the last part. And that is a brief look at what are the most central features and the most central issues of mobile information system. Maybe the biggest feature in itself is that you now have access to most of the data that's available on the internet just about any time and every, everywhere. That's been called some kind of intelligence amplification. I wouldn't go to so far as to actually call it improving your intelligence, but it improves your knowledge base. So you don't have to remember lots of stuff anymore. You can just look it up whenever you want, um, especially for things that are covered in Wikipedia, for example. Um, another feature is that you have can, can now have services based on your physical location, like stuff like show me the next, the next coffee bar or something like that. That's uh, also something that wasn't really possible before. And finally, um, you can adapt all of these uh, to the context. This is something that's not yet being done so much, but it should at least in theory be possible and a lot of research is going in that direction that I automatically uh, uh, discover on the mobile device, for example, what the user is currently doing. So is he, for example, driving a car? Then I will probably don't want to distract him with calls and he will probably just want to listen to music or maybe use the, the navigation um, and so on. So, uh, or maybe if, if someone is walking, then you could in theory think about um, making the user interface uh, a, little, a little less cluttered and uh, increase the buttons in size so you can hit them more easily when you're walking. All, all kinds of ideas are floating around in that uh, regard, but they are all related to the context the user uh, is in. Um, here are some application examples. I won't go into too much detail here. You can uh, kind of, kind of think of many more, I guess, what you can do with um, mobile devices. Maybe one thing I'd um, briefly like to, to discuss is I've listed augmented reality here. Of course, you can like view things through your phone and uh, add, additional, add additional data on top. That's augmented reality. Uh, why would you say virtual reality isn't here on that list? So it's a very, uh, there's a very simple reason in my opinion, yeah. Computing power, but I mean, here we are trying to do it through the device to get better capability. Mm, yeah, I, I think it's even, uh, it's even a lot more simple. Why isn't, what, what's the problem with mobile VR? If you put those two things in the, in the same context. Yeah. Mm, yeah, also true, but I'm thinking of something even much more simpler. Exactly. Exactly. So you couldn't really be mobile anymore once you're in a uh, in a VR environment. Because once you start walking around, you will uh, fall off some ledge or walk into something and so on. There are, of course, virtual reality systems. You can actually buy them now, the HTC Vive, for example, which kind of allow you to do that. But I wouldn't call that a mobile system because one, it has a large cable, which you can't, can't disconnect from. And you only have like three by three meters at most in which you can walk around. Um, so the Gear VR, of course, is a, is a good example, but uh, strictly from, a, from a, a classification point of view, I wouldn't call that mobile because you can, can actually just use it if you're sitting in a chair, basically, because otherwise you would just trip over something. Okay, so um, now that we've looked at what mobile information systems allow us to do, what are the problems? So the most central aspect, which we've already mentioned several times now, is that we have mobile hardware. And for that reason, it needs to be light. You don't want to carry around like uh, 
10 pounds of battery, for example. Um, and it moves around with the user for that very reasons, and so we get additional issues. For example, um, we do have limits in terms of device size, so we do have limits in terms of power storage and, and data storage. Um, and since the device moves around with the user, we only have, uh, we ca can only rely on wireless communications. You don't want to plug an ethernet cable in your phone every time you want to use it. Um, we have different I.O. capabilities, again, due to the size. And uh, since the user can basically be anywhere, we can't predict what the usage context is. So these are the, the major issues uh, which I would, would, uh, as, as I would classify them. And for that reason, we get, again, lots of these trade-offs. So um, very simple ones. Uh, we can, of course, have a larger battery. Some people even buy additional batteries for their mobile phones. But then, of course, uh, the portability goes down because you have more weight, you have more volume. Um, and for that reason, it's really important to start looking into energy consumption when you, for example, write a mobile app. It's, this can be something as simple as turning the screen off because the screen is actually one of the biggest power consumers on any mobile device. Um, and when you turn, uh, when your app for some reason uh, doesn't allow the screen to turn off, then the battery can be empty in a few hours and the user is annoyed. So energy consumption is one of the, the most important aspects to, to look into when dealing with mobile devices. Uh, same kind of applies to storage. There we can make a, tra a different trade-off. Of course, we can have a bigger device where, with um, more flash memory, but then again, we have the size trade-off or we can trade off storage for bandwidth. So we can put everything on some cloud server, um, uh, but then of course we have to kind of communicate with that server if you actually, if you actually want to, to get the data. Um, there's actually a second trade off uh, here when, you, when we look at bandwidth. So even if you have, maybe you have an un unlimited mobile contract so you don't have to care at all about how much data you you transmit. There is there still another trade-off in, in, uh, if you do that. So if you don't store anything at all on your phone and just have everything in the cloud. Yeah, security. yeah, security, of course. That's always one. Connection. Exactly. Exactly, so that would also be one. Yet another one. Well, energy consumption. The, usually the second biggest consumer of, of energy is the, are the wireless modules. So if you uh, have to communicate with a cloud server all the time for every picture you take and so on, then uh, your battery will be empty a lot faster than if you store things locally. So again, there's tons of different trade-offs and there's no perfect solution you kind of have to try and adapt it to whatever context, again, um, the, your, your solution will be used in. So we've already talked about wireless issues, so you have different coverage, you have um, uh, different types of coverage. For example, you have area-wide coverage by um, mobile networks, at least most of an area. Of course, you always have dead zones. Then you have hotspots with, which offer, for example, higher bandwidth, but only in a very limited area. Um, there's very simply put price. I, not a lot of people I know actually do have an unlimited contract. Most people have, I don't know, 500 megabytes, one gigabyte per month, which, uh, which they can use. And if they want more data, it either gets very slow or uh, they have to pay additionally. So unlimited bandwidth is also an assumption you usually can't make. Then you can't really predict the availability even if you have an area with perfect coverage. If you have something like a large, large rock concert, for example, where thousands of people with mobile phones come to the same small area, then um, the coverage may still go down or the bandwidth the available ones because all those people have to share very few access points, very few cell towers. Um, also an important aspect is that since the device is moving, you can, uh, can't have static routes. 
Uh, so the, the internet originally was designed for static routes. And now that you have mobile devices which move between different access points or between different cell towers, you kind of have to rely on, on workarounds to actually make the data take the right route to the device. Um, so the original internet protocols aren't really designed for that. We'll look into that later. Um, one big issue is I.O. I've already mentioned the, the so-called fat finger problem, that you can't really do the same kind of precision work on a touch screen, which you can do with a mouse uh, and a keyboard. So stuff like uh, Photoshop or uh, maybe even more precision-oriented stuff like technical drawings will be very difficult to map onto a touch screen. Maybe you can, can kind of help out by using a stylus, but uh, again, you have a very, very different set of uh, I.O. channels than you have with a regular computer. And uh, it's, of course, hard to, to put a number on that, but in general, the bandwidth of each single channel is smaller than what you have with a keyboard and mouse, and also the, uh, the precision. Um, here it's maybe not so much a question of a trade-off regarding to, to size and weight. Of course, you could have some kind of tablet uh, with an additional keyboard. Then you can have all the advantages of the keyboard, but you also need to deal with the additional weight. But um, it's yeah, maybe rather a matter of different modalities. So uh, if you uh, if you try to take what's what works on the desktop and put that on mobile, that doesn't really work. We've seen that with uh, Windows CE um, because just so much of the small screen is then taken up by, by uh, for example, like the, the title bar of the Windows and so on that you just don't have any space to work with anymore. Um, so it's not so much uh, a matter of trying to do a one-to-one -one mapping, but it's a matter of trying to think of different ways of putting data into the device, as we've already uh, talked about. And final issue, just to give some more examples, is again context. So um, it's very easy to design something that's usable by someone who's sitting at a desk or in a chair, but uh, as soon as people start uh, standing or then they don't have any support anymore to put their device down. Uh, if they're walking, it starts to shake. Um, if they're not paying attention, they might wa walk into something. Uh, maybe they're, uh, they're lying down on, the, on, on their couch or something like that. Also, again, different usage context. Um, driving in a car, we already mentioned that. You get, you get uh, shaking and you shouldn't probably distract the guy who's actually driving the car. Um, all of that uh, are very different usage contexts, but mobile devices are used in all of them. So it might be noisy, it might be very quiet. So for example, you're in a, in a cinema and don't want your, your phone to ring. Um, so this is again a thing of, uh, about context. So ideally, your phone should recognize that, oh, I'm in a cinema, I shouldn't ring right now loudly. Um, on the other hand, that can, of course, backfire if that kind of detection doesn't work or works too well and you're waiting for an important call and but your phone has decided that, oh, I'm in the cinema right now, even if you aren't. So um, this kind of context detection has to work very well for users to accept it. And uh, as at least from my point of view, it doesn't yet work reliably enough so that people actually want to use it. So there are certain uh, certain workarounds. So for example, you could um, you have devices which detect when you put them in the car in a, in a spe specific uh, car dock and then they switch to a certain different context basically where they are adapted for car usage. But um, yeah, that's a very specific scenario and some kind of general context detection uh, isn't, really, isn't really there yet. Um, all right, so let's briefly summarize this again. Um, 
we have the one main feature is, of course, that we have a mobile device. But on the other hand, this leads to quite a couple of issues like uh, the power and storage stuff I've talked about, connectivity, um, all the different I.O. channels, and the unpredictable context. And this is what we're going to, to have a look at in the uh, next couple of lectures. Um, yeah, since this is the first lecture, uh, we're mostly done already. Are there uh, any questions or comments at this point to the regarding the, the features and issues? Or, of course, uh, regarding the, the lecture and uh, exercises in general? Anything? Yes? No, no. Oh, good point, yeah. If you've, so um, I've already mentioned this briefly on the, on the first slide, but the, uh, the exam and the exercises are basically independent from each other. So you have to pass both to pass the entire course, but if you've passed the exercises last year, then that's perfectly fine. You don't have to redo them again. So your grade will just carry over. Yes, please. Um, given the, the size of the course, it's probably going to be a written exam. So, um, and it will probably be mid of June, I think, or no, mid of July, I think. But that's not yet, uh, not yet fixed. So, uh, probably written. Not 100% sure, but um, since we have, I don't. I think almost thirty people. It's. It will probably be written. Other questions. So um, maybe it would be a good idea to already think about if you uh, want to do the exercises in teams. You can do them alone, but you can also do them in teams of two, as I've mentioned, to uh, see and. Uh, already look around if you don't have a partner yet with whom you want to do the exercises to find one. Um, official start is on Fridays. The Johannes will give a tutorial on how to get, get set up with Android development. Uh, uh, but I think I will already put the exercise sheet online by tomorrow. So uh, try to have a look in Moodle tomorrow and um, then you can already get get an idea of what the what the first uh, sheet is about. First sheet is mostly about getting started, about getting set up with Android and writing a, a simple app. Uh, and uh, yeah, if there are any questions regarding the exercise sheet in uh, in advance after I've put it online, again, don't hesitate to use the the message board. Um, yeah, okay, I guess if there aren't any other questions, then we're done for today. Thanks for listening, and see you next week, I guess. <laughs>